Well, Senator, I know you're Thanks on a little so time much. crunch this morning and we want to keep you on schedule. So we just want to say thank you very much for taking the time on your weekend to be here with us and to learn about a really important project to us. And we're going to talk probably about a couple projects, but we really want to thank you for being here. We want to thank our state representative, <laughs> Dustin Height, Dustin Brink, Senator Rosenboom. We really appreciate you being here. This is a pretty exciting this is a pretty exciting project from a lot of standpoints, but one of the things that's most exciting about this is that we have the city and the county and our development group cooperating to make this happen. And so we want to thank the county for hosting us this morning. And I'm going to th turn things over to Michael, my, the lead applicant for this grant that we want to submit uh, to the USDOT is going to be sponsored by the city. And so we're all collaborating, but I think we have to have an applicant. So. And we're the applicant. Um, <laughs> and so we appreciate the opportunity to be the applicant. And what will happen is this presentation, we've given this a few times, and so it'll be kind of a bouncing in about of who wants to, to chime in here and there as necessary. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. Obviously, we're, we're uh, heavily focused on this area um, on planning and trying to, uh, I would say, meet our own needs. We've uh, worked well with the DOT. That's not necessarily listed as a, as a partner, but the DOT has been uh, a member of our, our coalitions of the past and the present. But obviously, you're familiar with the, the Oscillus area, uh, Mahaska County. And the picture on the far right is a little more uh, descriptive of where what we're trying to accomplish. I don't know if they can really see what we're trying to do. Should we put the map, why don't we put the map over ahead. in front of them? <laughs> so then this slide is the, uh, the map that will be in front of you. And the focus on our, our application for the raise grant uh, is planning. And, and so you'll hear probably from a number of communities that will be seeking construction dollars. We're seeking planning dollars. Uh, we're trying to address, I'd say, a long-term issue, a long-term problem for our area where uh, planning of the past doesn't keep up with the current growth of our industry uh, today and certainly not for the future. And so what we've been trying to do is figure out how to loop traffic and, and especially heavy transportation truck traffic around and out of downtown into areas where it's more efficient and it can get to where it needs to go quickly. And so the green line that's on this map, that's the northwest bypass that uh, our community, the region, lobbied and worked with the DOT to get on the five plan. And so that is in the plan. We constructed 2026. 20, 26. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed, again, with the different types of funding that's come in through stimulus, that'll stay where it needs to stay, and it'll get completed. Uh, so we're, we're proud that we're able to get the bypass done uh, in the near future. But that doesn't address all the concerns and issues that we have. This is the sector of most of our industrial development. We expect that more will occur in the Northwest as time goes on, but the idea is that right now we have, and Beth will talk more about the types of expansion, but a lot of the developments in this area, which means a lot of truck traffic is in that area. So we're trying to figure out how do we get traffic that typically comes north or even north, uh, excuse me, north or south and heads to this facility without it going through town. So obviously we're trying to figure out additional bypasses that might occur. So our planning grant encompasses the blue, the yellow, and then the other yellow section in the south. It used to include this, but we're working locally just to get that done on our own. So uh, trying to use the DOT RISE grant uh, because we have immediate opportunities to, to get some, some uh, construction done. We're also working on what this oval is, the certified site, the state's process. So we're looking at a large uh, swath of, area, of, of properties there. Uh, anywhere from 500 to 750 acres to try to get certified and be shelter ready for industrial, uh, further industrial development. What's that? <laughs> so the application, what it is that we're trying for, I mentioned $950,000 grant opportunity uh, to raise 850 truly from the feds, $100,000 locally funded. Uh, that partnership, uh, how we'll fund that locally is through partnership through the city, the county, and the chamber. So forty thousand city, forty thousand dollar county, twenty thousand dollar chamber. Again, we have a history locally of funding, a number of studies. We want to make sure that we show that we have skin in the game. And for a million dollar 
grant, $100,000 seems to be pretty good. Uh, again, looking at that wide area and a long term to loop around and awesome. Thank you. This is where Beth takes over. She talks about a wonderful <laughs> thing that's happening. Okay. She does this for a living. I should know this by now, but I've relied on her so much. I'm like, <laughs> it's just fine. I think one of the reasons we, we want to show this is just we want to talk a little bit about our industries. And one of the things we always share is that in Mahaska County, 24% of our workforce is engaged in manufacturing. And our neighbors <laughs> to the west in Marion County have about 38% in manufacturing. And together we are within the top five. We have been one and two. I don't know where we are this year, but we are among the highest in the state. And right now, um, a year ago when we uh, did a survey of our industries, one of the things we learned is that they have about $60 million of expansion planned within the next wow. one to three years. So that area on the map that's gray, that industrial park area, a lot of our manufacturers are in that area. We know that Cargill, nine miles to the south, has about 500 trucks a day, and more than 90% of their grain comes from the north, and so we've got heavy truck traffic coming along that corridor. Um, we know that DFS, who is in our industrial park, just did an expansion and doubled their capacity in Tom. We have four or five hundred trucks a day now yeah. and growing. They've got with, more expansion planned. With a significant number going to Cargill. Mm -hmm. Yes. That puts them right through the middle of Oscars. Right. So, so that connector is very important. The, the connector, the connector on the northwest is important, but the connector and the study <clears> that we want to do to look at how we would route traffic on the northeast side is just as important because we have people who are going directly to our industrial park and with a certified site we know we'll have additional growth beyond what is already projected. One of the things that's notable to the people in this room we know a lot of our companies are hometown headquarter companies. Hey, sorry about that. Just in time. Um, a lot of our companies are hometown headquarter companies and I think one of the one of the things that's important to note about that is research and development is here. They're, they provide stability. Um, we, we have companies that about 70% of our companies export to about 180 countries worldwide. So we have a wide reach and a lot of growth happening. We haven't heard anything that would lead us to think there's a slowdown coming. So we're pretty excited about what's happening here. And this won't read the names to you, but many of those companies are home. Home, home, hometown headquarters, Cargill's plant, uh, Eddieville, you probably know, mm -hmm. second largest yeah. in the world. So um, we, have a, we have a lot of industry here who want to be able to serve them, and so this study is in, very important for that reason, just trying to plan ahead. So this slide, I think, is good because it talks about the history of the partnership between the entities that are in the room. And uh, this isn't something that we just kind of came up with one time and said, hey, we're trying to get federal money. How do we get it you know, acquired and get it spent? The issue is we've been trying to work on bypasses for decades. And we do believe that the, the raise grant opportunity will be kind of the catalyst to solve that problem for us, which has been decades long of, of planning, but yet not really starting and stopping. We're really thinking that it'll get us through over that hump and, and get it complete. Uh, obviously, you can see in the 80s, we identified some areas where there should be a bypass. We expected there to be development uh, from the industrial side. And again, just we have not been able to get it done. I say that, but I also showed you on the map that there's a certain section of that, that bypass, that loop, that we're trying to accomplish on our own. And again, I think that's been one of our areas where we started and stopped, but we haven't had the RISE grant opportunity or the certified site opportunity as an option or as a tool to leverage like we had you know, like in the past. So those things didn't exist. Uh, they do today, and so I think as a group we collectively said, let's try to get this figured out. I say collectively, city council, the board of supervisors, and then our DOT uh, friends. So again, this timeline just, we like to show that because Infrastructure projects take forever, for one. Uh, people think that you just go out there, you design it, you build it, and it's good, right? No. No, it takes decades. <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully we'll all still be here to see the study work completed, 
and then also the funding in the future to get that loop constructed. And if we don't, again, I, I think we're all realistic to say, if we don't get that, we're gonna figure out, just like we always do, we're gonna figure out a way to get that done. Uh, but it sure would be nice to have that federal guidance and that dollar, you know, because it's a nice framework to get the things done that need to be done. So we do think that would be helpful to bring us all to the table, the community to the table, business partners, everybody to solve the problem that we've identified over and over and over again and then finally address it. You've driven the roads in Oskaloosa. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say that first and foremost. Uh, something that we always try to work on, um, but you can put up as many signs as you want. You can have as many police and, and sheriff you know, deputies out there. But there are just some factors that are involved in road design from years ago that won't translate to today. And so many of the roads that exist were either built in the 20s, the 60s, or the 70s. And they're all towards their, their end of useful life. And so that's you know, the bisecting roads, the state highways. Um, we have a horrendous <coughs> traffic issue as far as accident rates, and you can see it there. And we're, it, it's significantly higher than the state average. Um, and we are trying to do things locally and again working with the, the county as well to identify ways that we can try to try to disrupt or prevent conflicts between trucks and pedestrians, um, trucks and other vehicles, and just in general. And so we've done other stu studies through the state. But again, those are small. That's small stuff. Really, it's, a, it's more about improving the system, and that's why, again, this application is so important. That statistic is stunning. But actually, that's um, not actually. It should be 98. No, no. The the all that all the crashes just on those three highways together uh, make it 25 percent higher than the state average. Iowa 92 by itself. If you just take that, that's about 98 percent uh, of the state average. So um, this section here. This section here. Mm -hmm. Plus. Or south. I think the corridor study that we had in the, in the past for Highway 63, that long corridor, I think that was 36 percent right. right. higher than state yep. average for yep. for uh, accidents. And um, the interesting, the, the funny, the kind of what a funny thing is now with the COVID-19 that just happened or last year, right? Um, the Iowa DOT has a has a metric that shows the traffic dropping down to almost 1948 levels during the time when the shutdown or the lockdown was in place. In spite of that, all that slowdown that happened, we still had 67 crashes uh, on these three highways. Well, it tells me either you have very bad roads or very bad drivers. That was part of the road. Or both. I'll say or both. I think the mixture. roads are certain. I mean, you can see on the right hand side all those. The, the entire 63 is pretty much in red and orange. Uh, 92 is pretty much orange. 23 is orange. Uh, orange essentially means that they're right at the mark of getting to a point where they need to start doing some serious uh, work or reconstruction. The stuff in red pretty much means that they are at reconstruction stage. I mean, we don't have any, we don't have the dollars right now, but that's where we are um, right now. And what this planning study will do is, uh, is hopefully uh, enable the city and county to then kind of work with the DOD to take those highways over. So then once we get a truck traffic out, it just becomes a local facility. Hey, Bushan, before you go on, the slide on the left, I think one of the things that's remarkable to me is we have a bad corner at Market and 15th, and we're going to talk about what's going on there. But if you look at the dots along 63 coming through Oskaloosa and 92 coming through Oskaloosa, we don't have a bad corner. We have more, tra more traffic going through on those roads than it's designed for. I mean, it really wasn't designed for the levels. It's a good problem to have, but that really indicates to you that it's not, it's not the intersection of 63 and 92 it's all along that corridor so we've got uh, you know that tells you a little bit about the road design and the amount of, of load it's bearing I mentioned this a little bit before this is just an animation to show you um, a little bit of what I said before we've got countries this says this is 80 countries but um, through Tom's work and through Deanne DeGroote who's our Chamber Director, um, what we've learned is it's not exporting to 80 countries, we're exporting to 180 countries in the world. So this is just an animation to show you uh, a little bit about, you know, 
a, a little bit about what's happening with our industry. So I mentioned that earlier, but this is just an animation to show that. And I'm going to let you handle greenhouse gases. I'm sorry. One of the, the main criteria for the raise grant, uh, and last year we submitted for the bill grant as well. Uh, it went to the secretary's desk, and it was highly recommended, but we are not lucky to get it. Uh, but so those criteria haven't necessarily changed. But this year's grant, they have added uh, two uh, more factors. One is the, you know, they have $30 million set aside for the planning, for planning grants. And all the $30 million, $10 million are uh, assigned towards projects that serve those areas of persistent poverty that you see on that map in front of you, and where, where the highways uh, kind of act as barriers uh, for the development of the, of the local areas. And as you can see there on this map, the 92 cuts right across uh, pretty much uh, east to west. So you can see the green areas are right south of 92 uh, versus the other areas. So uh, obviously by doing the bypass right now with all the lights and you know the uh, trucks need to slow down significantly as they go through the city limits, you've got all these lights. So the stop and go traffic obviously is, is creating a more of a, you know, it's not really a, a healthy situation for the residents in that area. Um, by doing a planning grant where the trucks have a smooth flow, uh, pretty much a non-stop loop to, go up, to get across the town, across uh, Oskaloosa, uh, you automatically uh, have less emissions, which is one of the criteria that, that the grant asks for. Um, and then obviously, you know, as we are going more towards electric vehicles, you know, more towards autonomous vehicles, um, <coughs> The planning study will also enable us to look at that as we do the planning, kind of go a little bit, not a little bit, go way beyond what NEPA requires to kind of plan for the future, you know, with vehicle to, you know, vehicle to vehicle, with we do X technology and stuff like that. So, so it's kind of a, like Mike just mentioned, it's more of a far reaching planning kind of get as much as uh, benefits that we can. I think we'd be all right with sucking down the, the fumes. I think the noise and the vibration to the buildings, <laughs> that, that is... We have a video of that, that noise should We'll be able to show you that as well, yeah. Um, quality of life? Yeah, so that, as I was kind of leading into, just the, the vibration, the noise, um, kind of that pollution side. Downtown, obviously, is, is a, a core meeting place and gathering point for our community. Uh, it's very disruptive. Uh, if you've been down there, you know it. It is, it's brutal at times with the amount of traffic. I mean, it's great because somebody's making money, but it, it obviously affects the quality of life. Uh, we mm -hmm. have. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, go ahead. It, it affects parking. I mean, it affects the downtown shopping areas because it's, it's harder to get into, harder to get out of. You always got trucks to deal with. I mean, there's always you know, kids crossing the streets. It's, it affects about everything. You can't even sit outside and have a cup of coffee. Yeah, you really can't. Uh, my office is right on that street, and there's no windows opening. You know, it's it's yeah, it's a mess. Um, but again, it's it's progress, and that's what happens. Uh, we have obviously a number of conflicts as you go up and down the corridor with the truck traffic, whether it be William Penn University or even just in downtown, because Penn is right on 63, and we have a, a crosswalk there. It's just a mess. So. We, Yes. Like Chicago area right. or bigger cities, they don't understand the semi can't stop on a dime, so they just hit the button and walk. And then you, I've seen coming because I live on the north coming in, <laughs> you see Jake breaks and and just squeals and they're because the kids just hit the button and and walk and someone's going to get hurt there. Yeah. And, and that's the, the biggest out of all of them. That's the scariest one to me yeah. because I come in from the north and see it all the time. It's yeah, really scary. Winter time is halfway up the hill and halfway down the hill, and you get mm -hmm. people sliding and you get people can't get started again. I mean, it's. I mean, for our purposes, we may want to videotape that and just at least add that mm -hmm. to the clip somewhere. Yeah. It, it is an issue. Yeah. DOT issued the crosswalk. Kids were crossing there anyways. Um, there is a bridge, <laughs> but it's not in the right spot. I mean, kids go where the, the Memorial Union is, and that's yeah. it's just a mess. So obviously, we'd like to try to see that addressed. Oh, my goodness. It's, not, bad, it's it, bad for both sides. I mean, yeah. the quality of life is down, but if you think of about it from an industry perspective, all that stopping, all that slowing down, I mean, it's, it's not efficient, it's not, it's not cost effective, so. One accident I mean, it's just, is, is costly. I well, mean, and that, that's what we're trying to avoid. Is, I mean, that's. You can't even calculate. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so Bushan, I don't know if you want to talk about no, the innovation. I, I think we just we talked, talked about, about that. already, you know, the innovation and you know, making sure it's future proof and future ready. Uh, 
and then obviously the partnership as Mike mentioned, you know, there, there's already a partnership between uh, uh, the chamber and uh, the city and the county, um, and they are contributing about 7,000 of the cost. So, um, or, although, according to the grant or the rural project, there is no need to show any match, but the county the group is still saying, no, we have skin in the game. So right. No, I think that's wise too. And just to show your commitment to the, the program, uh, this is the first time now that we're moving from build into raise, <laughs> we go through these iterations of uh, grant programs. But with the raise, grants, I, I know the drive to be much more environmentally friendly, uh, the reduction of emissions. Are they requiring that you use green products then as part of the project or this no. because this is just this planning? Is planning? Yeah. Uh, if it was a concession grant, they are looking at uh, those green initiatives <coughs> that you talked about, not necessarily using green products, but they are looking more in terms of you know, strong water mitigation, uh, okay. you know, using bio -swings. Uh, you know, using solar lights, you know, uh, using electric bus bus stops, you know, that are solar powered. So they're looking to do more of those products, yes. Uh, but uh, I don't think that there is a lot of push as of now to go to green cement or anything like that, because green cement is kind of a great thing, in my opinion, but, but still, <laughs> it's one of those things. But the, the planning uh, process, though, it, it will plan for different types of materials. <coughs> and, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, as a part of that planning, uh, the planning would essentially go towards uh, yeah, actually identifying what, what items can be addressed as a part of the study and then putting the cost to it because you, know, you have to come to the benefit cost analysis. So just by saying, well, I'm going to put a bio here, uh, the, the, the big scheme of things, that may actually be more cost than a benefit. So, so we have to do that and one of the requirements of the grant for construction dollars is the benefit cost analysis. So that will be done as a part of the study. Okay. Anyway, so, um, okay. Okay. so that's the summary slide. I don't want to necessarily read that to you, Senator, but uh, I mean, obviously right. we stress the importance of the, of the project to our area. Um, I think it'd be more important to, to show the video that, that's been put together for that. If, if so we have two videos. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, first, the first one is oh, wait. Uh, the <laughs> no, wait, there's on more. The two for one. Yeah. Uh, this is the video that. <laughs> Water happened. Okay. So this semi on the, yeah. on the left wants to turn, the left turn. east. 
Well, several of us in this room have had to do that. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it a million times. Yeah. It's like, and that happens on a frequent basis. We just let people grab it when you're there. So. Oh, and this yeah, is. We'll have a seven. second video that actually goes in more detail. Tough, that's tough. But this is the 15th. This is a local road. That's a local street on which all the drug traffic currently goes. We have about 400 vehicles go on that road. That's a residential street. 400 semis. Semis and heavy vehicles. So instead of connecting from 63 to 23, they use this 15th as a residential road with no sidewalk. That's horrible. Not yet. Uh, yeah, it's coming. I know. We have it on. We fit that out. <laughs> This was shot, I shot this at about a quarter to eight in the morning. Thursday morning. So that was not yeah. one of the peak days, right? No, so I, no, uh, DFS wasn't hauling that day and Cargill wasn't hauling that day. So none of what you see here, well, the, uh, DFS was, they had a couple trucks that came out, yeah. but they weren't, they weren't trucks coming in at that time. They, I think they avoid that time of day because they know it's school traffic. So this one I'm going to in fact, my uh, I had to turn that corner of the semi for my driving test for semi. Oh, did you? That's what you're. Yeah. Uh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> but as you as you just saw in the previous shot, the uh, same thing happened here. This car, this vehicle needs to back up, and even if the vehicle back backing up the semi, you needs to climb the curb to make the turn. Yeah, he's up on the Somebody lost the tire. Semi peeled the back tire off of it the other day. I watched it happen. Yeah. Yeah. He went over the curb. Yep. So this this road, um, according to the IOU, is 2019 count. This local city road that's barely 24 feet wide has about 3,000 vehicles on it on a daily basis, of which 415 trucks, there's 415 <coughs> trucks of which vehicles. So you can see the amount of vehicle traffic on the street. Mm -hmm. That's residential. But this is how, if you want to go to the industrial park, this is the road that our industries yeah. use so that's and, why it and it's a residential area and that sidewalk's kind of mis misleading because it only goes about 100 feet yeah that's a beautiful story. Back, 
right there, that, that area that's been highlighted, there's actually a pedestrian who's crossing the road with the dog. And there's no sidewalk on the other side, so he turns around and walks along the road. <laughs> This is where this industrial park is. Cool. So, mm -hmm. so on US 63, you have about 5,000 vehicles going, and then this intersection has 3,000 vehicles. This That's road. the intersection you were yeah. watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she was Beth was parked right here in the church near the church and just shot that. So, um, and as part of the the grant process, uh, will you be able to attach videos and? And photos to the, the grant. There is a website, moresiowa.com. The video is on the website. Yeah. And we, uh, I'm not gonna bring it up, but we uh, we have the website. It's got everything on there. The great grant, the latest of support from everybody. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot actually upload videos to the grants.gov. They only take documents. But the w everywhere in the grant document, we have the links. Link it. Okay. Yeah. So Good. they can yeah. go and take a look at it. So. No, I think that's important for them to visually see what's going on right yeah. yeah and last year we did we had meetings with uh, to the US DOT staff uh, yeah. we showed them we didn't have this video but yeah. we showed them the previous one um, and we had we also had meeting with the senators we had yeah, yeah we did so our request is obviously you've seen the information you're gonna hear I'm sure pitches from every community you stop in but <laughs> would appreciate your support uh, for our grant application, obviously, wherever you can lean on people or the DOT staff, uh, the yeah. DOT. It's an important thing. Uh, I don't think people understand what happens in Oskaloosa and Mahaska County. Right. I mean, there's a lot happening here. Right. And, and we're not the you know, Cedar Rapids corridor. Mm -hmm. And we know that, but we're, I think, just as important, if not maybe even more important, because this is kind of the bread and butter for Iowa. And it, it's I think we've been overlooked for a number of years, and, and again, the DOT is trying to help us out, but this is the type of stuff that we're trying to take care of on our own because of yeah. the issues that, you know, we're not as attractive as Des Moines, we're not as attractive as Iowa City. Um, so you can see our commitment, hopefully we'll get the, the support yeah, from the feds as well. I've been known to uh, tease some of my colleagues in the mm -hmm. capital. I said, you know, I'm from a rural district. All I have is Vermeer, Pellicorp, Musco, Carville, yeah. Eddyville. <laughs> That's all that's in my district. Yeah. So. Um, well, and we are always happy to, to support, um, and we can do a letter again. I know we had done this for the, the build grant as well, and we're happy to promote you however we can. We appreciate that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I, I do think as we're looking at the new raise requirements, especially with the emissions issues, I think that actually gives you a little bit of a leg up as well because so much of this traffic is going through residential areas. So that's one thing that maybe you didn't have in the past. Mm -hmm. Now with that requirement, mm -hmm. it may put you a little further up in the grant process. And we'll look yeah. at that some we more. Will. Yeah. yeah, I, I think so. I know this is some of a side issue, but Highway 23 now, and, and a town water, JBS, and, and all that, that's this road here. Mm -hmm. Used to be a state highway, or mm -hmm. still is, it still is. Mm -hmm. Is there any plans there? Or is the state trying to dump that onto the county? Is that what? There's talk. I'm not excited <laughs> to receive it. Well, I know, but I mean, is that official? I've, it's always no, been my assumption. There, there's, there's talk. Um, I think the, the more the bypasses and the things get involved, probably the, the more talk there will be. I do well, know, I'm on the transportation committee, I do know now, our, our so I'd like to know. We need to I, talk about that. I can see with Andrew, but I know Andrew is not very excited to receive it, and he will put up a petition to not take it at the county level. It's, well, a, it's a narrow road. It needs a lot of work. 
very narrow shoulders. I know it's a side issue. Please have him communicate with me a okay. letter or something. Okay, we'll do. So Ken, obviously in, in the Northwest Bypass kind of discussions and, and part of the negotiations, obviously the DOT is going to invest quite a bit of money in that bypass. Part of the condition is that the transfer of jurisdiction will occur between the, you know, the, the northernmost point to the southernmost point of Oskaloosa. So we're expecting as a city and county to receive portions of 63. They're, they're talking about portions of 23 as well, but we have not started the, the negotiation as far as, hey, how much, what's the replacement life cycle cost of the road? What would we expect to see as locals? That hasn't happened yet. McClure is gonna help us out with that. Uh, and with some turnover in District 5 recently, um, I don't think that's gonna hurt, but I think that's our next step as the project moves forward, the Northwest Bypass moves forward in the DOT's uh, plan. We want to make sure that we're talking about that and it's contingent upon the construction of that bypass. Keep in the loop. Absolutely. And, and to that point, the, the transfer of jurisdiction of 63 and 23 and 92, it's all contingent upon just, be, just by this county and the city taking the roads over, does not alleviate the fact that there are zero trucks going through that road. So now, actually, it's actually not a good situation in a sense because obviously. Once the city takes it over, the city does not get any more funding for right, those roads right. because of the way the gas tax works. The county gets some, but it's nowhere close to what the state, exactly. all the three highways, uh, and make them local. Uh, I think that will just enable the, the city and the county to have more right. planned development in those areas because those barriers that, that are being created right now with those three highways, especially on the green side, as you can see, it's kind of gets more interesting. <laughs> That's what I said. So this is 92, mm -hmm. and you can see, I mean, this drawing just illustrates very clearly how 92 is acting as a physical barrier right. between it, you know, no poverty versus an area of question poverty. But on this area, you have 63 and 23. So it's basically, you have two highways now creating barriers. Um, so if we, if we were to able to get all this truck traffic out, and then these roads now become local roads, I think then the city has much more, you know, interest or you know, value in right. developing the downtown areas, making them more, you know, pedestrian friendly, mm -hmm. um, encouraging students to come down <coughs> and you know, enjoy the downtown mm -hmm. benefits. Um, that's not available right now. Right. So, um, right. But yeah, I mean, that's that's certainly on the, okay. the list. <laughs> right. And DOT will be here June seventh and eighth. The DOT Commission has their one of their oh, okay. public input meetings here. So they'll be touring on the 7th, so they'll have a chance to see, it. they're actually gonna sit in this spot and watch Good. that day, and then the 8th is public hearing. So, Senator, you'll probably be <laughs> out of town, but. I think uh, I probably already booked, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. week. But, yeah. <laughs> but our state representatives wanted to give you a heads up if yeah. you're gonna be around. Good, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think it's a great project. Yeah. So that's everything we have. Yeah. Yep. Well, any any questions for me? Just a little bit of time before I visit with the press. Mm -hmm. Again, I would just if there's any shortcomings that you've noticed, appreciate the feedback on the residential and the green uh, green side of things. How, it, just as I stated, I really think you know make sure that there is some sort of um, discussion about the emissions in in these residential areas, and I. Oh, this is horrible. I would not want to live there. I would not want <laughs> my child to walk there. <clears throat> yeah, she's 21 now, but if she were younger, I would yeah, not want her to yeah. walk there. Yeah. Just, just to the left of that sidewalk is a new new redevelopment. So we had oh, somebody nice. actually put some townhomes yeah. in there, and, and it's much nicer than it used to be. Yeah, it really is much nicer. But you're right, that corner is brutal. It's, it's well, and who would, you know, so you have a new development there. But that just adds to traffic and concerns on that road too. And in the winter months, yeah. we've got the low sun coming. Yeah. Oh, the kids are walking down that street. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. So we're building sidewalks. We're yes. <laughs> saying that we're, we're oh right. my gosh! But even crossing, crossing the road is it's horrible. <coughs> it's just the noise, it's the vibrations, it's everything. It's, it's a city street. It's not meant for traffic. Right. Industrial right. 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 use. Yeah. Yeah. It cost the businesses a lot of money to have those trucks really slow. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you questions? so much for yes, your time. Thank, thank you very much. much. We appreciate no, everyone I am, being here. I am
so glad that we had this time to to go through this. Yes. Um, Thank you very much. Really we appreciate you being here. Yeah. yeah. Taking the time to learn about it. Yeah. So I will let um, um, John or Joe will follow up, but we'll make sure that uh, we get the information and we can put a letter together. And we'll change it a little bit from last year, depending on what you would like us okay. to emphasize. Okay. Okay. We'll probably add okay. the environmental piece a little bit more prominently. I, yeah, because I, if you have noticed, <laughs> this administration's focus is on <laughs> climate justice. And so I think if you are leaning a little more in that area, <laughs> right? you know, Thanks yeah. for heads up. good, yeah, bad, it's ugly, great. I actually, I think it's a valid point. I think it's a valid point for these residential communities, mm -hmm. and I, I do think we need to consider the emissions in these areas. So, I think that, if if we can include that a little more, that is the first silver lining I've seen. I know. I am actually a little excited about the opportunity we have here to maybe use that as a leverage tool. Yeah, so take advantage of the situation. Exactly. I mean, we, we will move and modify with every administration, and if it gives you an ad, for heaven's sake, you need to use yep. it. Yep. So, absolutely, we'll do it. So, let's capitalize on what is a bad problem. Yeah. 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 We do want to thank you for your time to come and send Yeah, of course. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It's great. And it's good to come catch up with yeah. legislators. <laughs> and, yeah. So, thank you. We're going to task Abigail with um, writing the letter of support. Can there you go. go. <laughs> She's like, She's like what? what do you want me to do? What am I going to do? She was excited to come see Senator Joni Ernst, who she saw all summer on television. Oh, yeah. the good one. Yeah, I hope you didn't pay attention to hey, any Donna, of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming.